I was getting lots of requests from the community members to talk about Azure interviews, interviews questionnaires, and the answers for those so that people can get the zest feel of the interview and they can implement what they're studying, what they have worked upon, because we all know Azure is not a one technology, but the ocean of technologies. Hello everyone, my name is Arun and welcome to the Azure interview question part one. This is my blog that you see on your screen, which I have wrote after the consideration of all the requests. And we are starting from the basic to intermediate and then we'll finish in the advanced. I don't know how many blogs I have to write for those, but it is just the uh, start for the series, hence the video. So uh, these are the questions that I'm talking about right now is for Azure administrators, cloud engineers, Azure engineers or cloud associates, but it's quite relevant to everyone who is working on the Azure or cloud. So uh, before I start, I have to mention the three very important questions which will help you set your impression in front of your interviewers. The very first question is talk about yourself or introduce yourself that almost everyone has faced. So this is the question. I do not want to talk about much on this because you all know what you have to mention about your career, your experience, and the things that you are confident with, the things that you have done, the things that you have achieved. And if you see the interviewers are really interested in you, then you can also go a little off, tra or off track than uh, talking about your work X. But the second question is very important. The second question is, what you do in your daily life as a cloud engineer or what you actually do in Azure? So this is the question that will give you an open ground to talk about anything that you do on the cloud, anything that you are confident enough to explain each and every aspect of that particular service. Please prepare your this question. It all it, it is there every time you go for the interview. When I take interview, I always ask this question. And it depends how the interviewee explain their daily life, what they actually do, what all things they touch, what all services they are experienced with. So it is a very good question. And you know this is going to uh, asked, so you can prepare it well. Okay. Now third question is absolutely, absolutely very important, which is actually important for you. Because the ball is in your court, the question is, describe an issue or scenario that you recently faced or fixed. So we all know, we all face issues, we all fix issues, but it's not like uh, every day you are encountering the issue. No, no environment is that vulnerable, right? We may face in a week, in a 15 days, the issue that we can talk about. I'm not talking about very simple issue and request. So, you know, these kind of questions will come across. So you got to prepare at least five scenarios which are not so, you know, small or not so uh, common. And you study about those scenarios. You talk about all the aspects, how you fixed, how this issue uh, came to you, came to the environment, what were the root cause and all those kind of things. And these three questions will help you put yourself out there and set the a very good impression for the interviewers. Well, I have to mention these questions because this is the beginner's blog. This is the first blog on the interview. So let's jump into the cloud questions. Okay. All right. So our first question is, what type of disk used by Azure VM right here? Okay, I'm not showing the answer because if you are with me, just think about it. We have already covered this in our AZ300 series. Uh, the three type of disks used by Azure VM is, we all know we need OS disk to install the operating system. 
and there is always a temporary disk a temporary disk which is there on the the space is there on the host and the data disk if you need some more space on your vm you got to attach the data disk so these three type of disks is used by azure vm os data and temporary storage okay let's go and this is the link of the youtube video i have created on that which includes a lot more information than only about this disk now can you use the temporary storage or disk to store data all right we have already covered that part as well well uh, you can store but it is not recommended at all even as the name suggests it's a temporary storage when you open the temp storage or d drive it is mentioned there don't use to store data which is actually important for you uh, but nobody is stopping you to store data but you will lose the data in case of vm resizing or if the vm is shut down and you should uh, you know turn it on next day or maybe after a few minutes restart would not uh, hamper the data but things like resizing shutdown updating host or hardware issue because in that scenario your vm would jump to a next host and your temporary storage would uh, remain in the old host so there is your answer always give your answers in such a way that you know what you're talking about okay let's go to another question question number six can you change the drive letter of temporary disk if yes then how well this is this is a very common scenario i have faced this scenario during the migration and yes you can change the drive letter of your temporary disk but there is a a, a proper steps proper way to do it because temp storage is also used to save the page file so what you gotta do <clears throat> if you go ahead you know in the disk management try to change the drive letter you would not be able to do that so what you gotta do you gotta move the page file temporarily to the os disk or the c drive change the drive letter and then again move the page file to the temp storage that's the proper way and i have also shared the ms documentation for this and we have also i think we have covered this in our easy series if not we'll definitely create one uh, video for that now the next question is can i add the existing machine to av set if yes then how and if no what's the workaround well we all know we can only add the vm when we create in the availability set when we create it so in case you have to move the existing vm to the av set there is there is not a proper uh, you know uh, resource there or process there but yes you can still move that you got to delete the vm move the and recreate the vm with the help of remains or the disk and during the recreation you can add it to the availability set so downtime requires okay now let's go to another one can you change the size of os disk if yes then how well yes of course you can change the rather change i would suggest let's say we can increase the size of os disk we, we cannot decrease it and you can increase it by deallocating the vm go to the disk configuration and from there you can change the size of os disk and the same thing applies for the data disk you cannot decrease but you can increase deallocate change the size and we're good to go now if you have stopped your azure vm from inside a vm would it incur charges uh well yes that's true and uh, if you do not want to pay additional charges it is recommended you stop or deallocate the vm from the azure portal question 10 how do you fix the issue if your energy is fine but still unable to rdp this is the issue i have faced quite often during the time of migration uh, but we know nothing is wrong with the energy because all other vms because NSG is attached to the subnet and all other vms we can rdp on all the vms are in the same subnet so what we do we go ahead and reset the rdp configuration from azure portal that fixes the issue you go to the vm go to password reset select rdp configuration reset and do it from there this process will enable the remote desktop service in the vm 
okay so these are uh, this is all about the my first block uh, and as I've mentioned here series has been started soon part to be coming and I don't know how many parts we need because it's it's huge uh, we'll try as much as we can well thank you for watching you have a good day I'll share the link of my blog in the description box bye bye